Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. It was one of the most intriguing hires of this entire offseason. Bobby Petrino is the new offensive coordinator at Texas A&M. But will Bobby Petrino work in College Station? That is the million dollar question and the question that we are going to answer for you today right here at the Gridiron Expert. So welcome back everybody. We're so glad that you could join us today as we break down some Aggie football. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including our official website, thegridironexpert.com, because guys, again, here at the Gridiron Expert, college football never dies. The season never ends here at our channel, and we want you to become a part of it. We want you to become a part of the conversation. We want you to become a part of the GE Nation. We want you here at our channel, and you can do that by liking, commenting, subscribing, and of course, hitting that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our future content, including game-by-game -game predictions for every single college football team. You do not want to miss out on that. That is the best part of this offseason. It leads us right up to the start of the season. So let's take a look at Texas A&M. You know, I, I'll, I'll go out there and say it right now. I have always been a fan of Bobby Petrino. I've been a, fran, a fan of his style. I've been a fan of his passion and energy. So if you're a Texas A&M fan, you probably like those aspects of it, but you also kind of worry about the drama that follows Bobby Petrino everywhere he goes, whether it is at the Atlanta Falcons, whether it's at Louisville, whether it's at Arkansas. Everywhere he goes, there seems to be some sort of drama. But you take a look at what's going on before that, right? Before we even talk talking about Petrino, we've got to look at why we're at this point. Well, Texas A&M under Jimbo Fisher has been wildly disappointing. Uh, the Aggies are 39 and 21 in five years with Fisher. No 10 win seasons. No SEC West titles. No SEC championships. No playoff appearances. Nothing like that. In 2021, the Aggies started the season ranked six in the country, but finished the year at eight and four. And then, of course, last year. The Aggies, again, started the season ranked sixth in the country and finished the year five and seven, highlighted by that major upset loss to Appalachian State. And a major reason for the Aggies, uh, you know, downfall last year and their struggles last year was the lack of offense. What are the struggles on offense? Last year, the Aggies averaged just 22.8 points per game. Good for 100th in the entire country, 100th out of 131 teams. They need help. They need some major offensive help. You look at the little numbers a little bit deeper. The Aggies scored 28 points or more, or scored over 28 points, I should say, twice last year. Season opener against Sam Houston State and the season finale and their upset win over LSU. That's it. Every other game, 28 or less. That's a problem. Another key note. In the last two years, 2021 and 2022 combined, the Aggies have only had five passes go for 40 yards or more against FBS teams. Last two years against FBS teams, which is the majority of your schedule, five passes only gone for 40 yards or more. That's a problem. The Aggies don't have an offense. They don't have the explosiveness. And so Fisher has brought in Bobby Petrino, one of the better offensive minds in the game, seems to have an electric offense everywhere he goes, to try to come into College Station to fix this problem, try to turn things around. But obviously that is easier said than done for a lot of different reasons. The first major reason is, will Fisher and Petrino even get along? What about the drama there? You know, because Jimbo Fisher and Petrino are both great offensive minds, but they're both very stubborn. They want to do things their own way. And for these last few years, Jimbo Fisher has been the primary play caller for Texas A&M. He may not want to let go of that responsibility immediately. That's a very hard thing to let go of. Is Fisher going to give Bobby Petrino full reign of the offense? Let him make every single executive offensive decision? That's a million-dollar question, and a question that Fisher might not exactly want to answer. A few weeks ago, at his first press conference of the spring season, many people were asking him about Bobby Petrino, the hire. What was his role going to be? Were you going to stop calling all the plays? Is he going to have full power? Everything like that. And Fisher kind of just kind of deflected all these offensive questions. He deflected a lot of the questions about Bobby Petrino. And I wouldn't say that's exactly a, a great sign. I know he said he has a lot of confidence in Petrino. Obviously, if he didn't, he would have hired him. But it was a controversial hire, and it's one that this marriage, it, it feels like it could be a little testy. It feels like there could be a little tension there. And that's not something you want on your sidelines as you're a team that's trying to rebound in a big way, trying to reach very high expectation, and trying to compete in the very, very difficult SEC West. We also know that Bobby Petrino probably wasn't Jimbo Fisher's first choice. Uh, there was a long, long wait there 
uh, between the time that you know the season ended and the Aggies need to find themselves a new OC. At one point, Bob Petrino actually left Missouri State, where he was the head coach, was set to join Barry Odom as the offensive coordinator at UNLV. Actually did take the job. And then after about a month, left UNLV to come to College Station. Again, drama everywhere you go. But Petrino seems to have uh, struggles with commitment. That was a, a case in, in Atlanta. That was a case in Louisville. He was in Louisville for a year. He was already interviewing for new jobs. Uh, he was set to stay at Arkansas for a while. We all know how that saga in Fayetteville ended. It's just always one thing after another with Petrino. And I think that probably does have some fans a little bit on edge saying, okay, he's on our sidelines now. What's going to happen next? Is it going to be drama with our coaches? Is it going to be drama with our players? Is it going to be drama with poor play calling, which I don't think would necessarily be the case? Is it going to be some other off the field issue? We don't exactly know, and we certainly hope that it's not going to be the case. I don't want that to be the case for AM and Petrino. But I think overall, there is a little bit of concern there. When you look at what Petrino is working with, he is working with a lot of potential. AM is a young team, and we know Jimbo Fisher has recruited well over these last few years, but they're still a relatively young team, and they, can, they have a young quarterback in Connor Wagman, who last year threw for 896 yards and eight touchdowns in five starts. Many believe that he will be the starting quarterback in 2023. Gets Petrino a lot to work with there. Devin A-Chain, Aeneas Smith, they're gone. That's huge. Two of the best players on the offense are now out of the question, not coming back. This is a team for A&M that has a pretty young wide receiver core. So Petrino might be able to develop Wagman, might be able to develop this young quarterback. Is he going to have the guys to throw to? Is he going to have the pass catchers that can help exploit those secondaries and help A&M maybe get more than five passes of 40-plus yards in one year as compared to the last two years combined? Whole offensive line does return, though. A lot of, a lot of protection there. But overall, offensively, A&M does not have a lot of depth. And, and that is a bit of a concern as you're trying to build up an offense that is hopefully going to become one of the more explosive ones within the conference. When you take a look at the overall picture, guys, I, I will say this. I do believe the offense should improve. I believe Petrino is the man in College Station. I've, everywhere he's gone, he has developed really good offenses. I and mean, I mean, look at it. His first stint at Louisville was great. His time at Arkansas was great. Developing quarterbacks like Ryan Mallett and Tyler Wilson. And Arkansas probably would have continued to grow had he not, you know, had a motorcycle wreck. Uh, then you look at the Western Kentucky team. That was really good. Went back to Louisville and obviously did extremely well there. Helped Lamar Jackson win the Heisman Trophy before things kind of fall, uh, fell apart a year after that. And then at Missouri State, kind of a rebuilding project and had uh, the Bears doing extremely well in the FCS before ultimately taking this A&M job. So everywhere he's been, the offenses thrive. I don't expect that to be any different now that he's in College Station with some really, really good talent. But... You look at his schedule, just because Petrino's there and just because the offense could improve doesn't mean a going to become an automatic contender. You're going to have a great opportunity to see what Petrino can do and what he has done by week two when A&M travels to Miami. Tough road game against a Miami team that also disappointed last year but should improve in year two under Mario Cristobal. That's your opportunity there. Let's see what the Aggies are made of. What does that offense look like when they go down to Miami? That's a great benchmark, great opportunity to see. After that, the schedule gets even tougher. September 23rd through October 4th, they have a four-game stretch against Auburn, Arkansas and Arlington, Alabama, and at Tennessee. Very brutal four-game stretch there. Later on, at Ole Miss and at LSU. The schedule is tough, but such is life in the SEC. But with such a tough schedule and with such tough games early on in the year with a young offense that's trying to figure things out with a new coordinator, it might not immediately lead to success for Texas A&M. Every year the Aggies are hoping to have this 9, 10, 11 win season, contend for the playoffs, do this, do that. Probably not going to happen this year. But what is going to happen is the offense will average more than 22.8 points per game. They will have multiple passes that go for over 40 yards. They will put up more than 28 points in more than just two games as compared to last year. Petrino is going to make an immediate impact. They won't become immediate contenders, but they're going to be a lot better than they were last year. Five and seven is unacceptable in College Station. That will not be the case in 2023, and you will see a drastic improvement on the offensive side of the ball, even if there is a little bit of tension and conflict between Fisher and Petrino along the way. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below. Because again, guys, here at the Gridiron Expert, college football never dies. The season never ends, and we want you to become a part of our G. E Nation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.